Hello, Umut here. Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to work on my art journal. This is Moleskine sketchbook that I am using. And I pulled out some scrap papers uh, from my stash literally that I had for years and years. I bought them cheap from somewhere, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, they were hanging around on my uh, in my stash uh, among my papers a long time. So I said let's uh, use them uh, this time. I'm going to work with three distress paints, uh, tattered rose, Victorian velvet and aged mahogany to create my background. But first I decided to have something going on at the back. Uh, these are tissue papers from Tim Holtz again, his uh, ideology uh, paper collage papers. Uh, and I think they are very useful when you just uh, get want to get rid of this blank page and have something going on at the back before you put uh, your colors. So I'm using my uh, matte medium to stick uh, randomly uh, parts of this uh, tissue paper. Uh, these are gifted uh, to me by my friend. Uh, I think it was like buy one get one free when she bought it. And she sent uh, all of the extra ones to me all the way from the US. So uh, thanks to her so much. Uh, I cherish them and I remember every time I use. Uh, after I stick this, uh, these papers I'm going to use some gesso to just cover this uh, really heavy black uh, ink that the papers have and let them uh, come through just uh, from the background. I used the Faber-Castell uh, gesso which is uh, really light. Uh, but uh, I also used some uh, baby wipe to make it even lighter so that uh, I don't lose the movement at the back as well. Otherwise why I used it. Uh, you can use any gesso. If you think your gesso is thick, you can always water it down to make it thinner. Or you can use a baby wipe while you are applying it so you make it thinner and uh, the uh, background at the back comes through. So while I was talking, I was applying my distress paints with my brush. Uh, as I said, I'm using a uh, tattered rose, Victorian velvet and aged mahogany. Uh, some uh, tones of uh, burgundies and uh, vintage pinks. Uh, I take the inspiration from my papers, of course. They had these uh, colors uh, of vintage uh, browns, uh, pinks, uh, wine color and some light green and uh, pink and green are on the opposite sides of the color wheel so they will contrast with, it, with each other and form a really uh, striking interesting look so I love uh, contrasting uh, colors on my art journals. I am working with these uh, three colors uh, until I like what I am seeing at the background. As you see I am sometimes manipulating the paint even with a baby wipe to soften them. And after I finished, uh, I'm going to splash the lightest color and the darkest color on the page just to have some interest. Uh, and it looks uh, more uh, energetic. Uh, and uh, as you see, the creases are uh, uh, also coming through uh, from the paper that I uh, glued. Um, I like that texture as well. It gives more interest. And after this uh, I'm going to move on uh, with my uh, focal points. I took this uh, one that I showed before uh, that has all the alphabets uh, in colorful squares. And I'm going to cut a few of those uh, to use uh, at the borders actually. I looked at these papers and I tried to create a composition in my mind uh, to, to be able to use as much as possible. I'm sure you have loads of papers as well in your stash uh, that you bought, you liked and you didn't use. So it's time to get them out and use them. I'm just going around the edges to lose all the white edges with a black marker. And I'm going to use my vintage uh, photo distress oxide uh, to go around the edges and make them uh, brown. and. Uh, Make the whole thing a little bit more vintagey and all this white not to pop uh, so much because uh, it will be more or less more muted vintage uh, inspired uh, colors. So after I do that I'm going to stick uh, my uh, piece uh, at the border. I'm not going to go around all the border and uh, glue and cover all the edges with these papers. 
but you will see I will uh, stick here and there to have a more or less uh, border uh, to frame my art journal. I'm going to apply this technique to all of the pieces. Uh, use vintage uh, photo uh, to uh, mute it down and get rid of the white uh, and also the white edges. Uh, I forgot to do it there but I'm going to do it later uh, to make it the same and uh, I'm applying it to all of them. As you see I'm not covering all the uh, all the borders but I'm making sure that uh, it creates a frame covering all the uh, page corners. Having some kind of border uh, in your art journals it just uh, makes a nice uh, frame. Uh, it draws the eye inside and uh, makes a definition. Uh, so if it suits, it's nice to have borders and different. you can have different different types of borders. There are many options. Now I'm going to cut these uh, little birds that are standing on books, uh, which are very nice and cute. And I cut other birds as well, again from the same paper uh, stash. Uh, and I will just uh, glue them down again with matte medium. Uh, since everything is permanent on my page, I can uh, easily use matte medium without any fear of uh, smudging anything. Uh, I will just go over all the uh, papers that I am uh, sticking down as well to be able to do the shading afterwards. So they need to be uh, non-porous. Uh, I just uh, made sure all the birds are uh, up are lined up uh, on top of each other. Let's see what to do on the other page. I just cut down this uh, balloon. Uh, as you see the colors are more like burgundy, pink, brownish, like vintage photo uh, colors like sepia and uh, this uh, uh, very light pale green. And I'm going to use this come fly with me as a sentiment. Uh, I just uh, tore down a couple of things uh, to place my sentiment on which will make it more interesting. I also took some uh, corrugated cardstock. Uh, I Recently I became uh, fond of this corrugated cardstock and I'm using it quite often actually. But it gives a really nice texture. I think it's a good opportunity to add some interest. And they are very cheap so and can be found everywhere. Again, I'm doing the same uh, ritual of adding vintage photo uh, on everything. And then I'm going to add my balloon and uh, all the sentiment uh, again with matte medium. As you see, all the splashes that I added uh, at the beginning are actually creating a really nice texture going with the colors, especially the burgundy ones, uh, the aged mahogany goes with the birds and the sentiment. Uh, now I want to do some uh, stamping as well. Since there are birds uh, on the page, it always reminds me of uh, birds are singing. So I wanted to add some music notes. Uh, this is my Kaiser Craft background stamp that has music notes. Kaiser Craft has these um, small background stamps that are really useful actually. So if you want to check them out, uh, it's an Australian company, but you can find them in uh, scrapbook.com, Amazon, uh, in all countries, I think. Uh, so yeah, uh, they would be also reasonably cheap uh, because they are small. And I used aged mahogany uh, to stamp uh, to do the stamping at the background. Uh, as I said, there's a background stamping. Uh, now I'm going to use uh, this uh, bundle sage uh, from this dress. I was trying two colors, but I decided uh, on the bundle sage. So I'm just applying it on a cardstock to do some uh, punching, die cutting. Uh, I use these uh, Martha Stewart uh, punches a lot. I find them very useful and versatile. I have butterflies, flowers, little hearts uh, and I use uh, all of them uh, very often. So it was a useful purchase we can say. 
I am again going around all the butterflies with this vintage photo for all the uh, images to match in style and uh, I'm going to uh, just glue these in the empty areas my uh, perception was this uh, part of the page was a little bit empty so I'm filling it out with color matching uh, little butterflies I generally use these uh, punches or little images to fill out space if I feel there is too much emptiness in a specific area so that's a little tip uh, you can use little uh, flowers little butterflies little birds uh, these little images to fill out space uh, if you feel uh, some area is looking empty and uh, finally I'm going to splash this bundle sage uh, color as well because why not uh, we have uh, all this green on the page and uh, it would be nice to have the splashes uh, in this color as well uh, I'm going to draw uh, the butterflies uh, antennas uh, and some spots later you will see and I'm going to do the shading now I'm using Caput Mortum Faber-Castell pit brush marker uh, and uh, I'm just going around all the areas even uh, on top of the balloon as you see to give some shadowing and moving the ink with my finger uh, this is Indian ink uh, so you have like a few seconds uh, before it dries uh, and it helps a lot with uh, all the shadings I'm doing it all around the birds as well and you will see I will do it around the border pieces too uh, It's uh, it definitely adds uh, more depth uh, and it makes things look more realistic belonging to that uh, page so uh, we always like to do the shading after I'm finished with it I'm going to also darken up the edges of uh, my journal page so that uh, I draw the eye inside I'm using a dark red uh, color uh, Faber-Castell gelato you could use uh, again pit brush markers it doesn't matter I'm just showing you different products to, uh, to do this so you have options and I am using a walnut uh, uh, color, uh, walnut brown color, Faber Castell pit brush marker to just go around the very edges uh, to darken them up uh, a lot uh, so that uh, the frame is very clear. And I think I'm done with the page. You see, I completed the butterflies too. Uh, I really love it. I'm so happy inside me that I used these papers in my stash. They were looking at me for a very very long time. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, it inspired you to grab your papers that are waiting for you in your stash. If you like my videos, please don't forget to like, comment or subscribe to my channel. It would really make me happy. Also, follow me over Instagram because I'm sharing different content, work in progress pictures or stories. So I'd love to see you there as well. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.